Welcome and happy holidays to all of you. Um, you know, I always, I, I said this in the executive huddle I have every morning, this morning, uh, when we were talking about gift giving. And I said, I know someone either hates me or really doesn't know me right. if they give me caramel popcorn. Yeah, or they, or they just, yeah, they're not, they're buying gifts out of convenience and they're not really paying attention. So it really has nothing to do with them caring so much. So if you send us gifts, don't send us gifts that send us to heaven early. <laughs> that during the holidays, it's really meant as a time of celebration. Right. But it is often a time for many people of chronic stress financial worry and worrying about what other people think of you. Right. And I have repeated the rule a lot on this program, the 1840-60 rule that says when you're 18, you worry about what everybody's thinking of you. When you're 40, you don't give a damn what anybody thinks about you. And when you're 60, you realize no one has been thinking about you so at all. So true. I love that rule. And even if you have sort of a um, national presence like we do, and people recognize us when we go to the store, go to Whole Foods, and they look in your basket to go, do you really, you know, live the message or are you getting Whole Food donuts? Um you know, we, we live the message most of the time. But even if you're well known, people are still not thinking about you. Right. They're thinking about them. But I want us to talk, after you read the review, about brain healthy gift giving right. and some of your favorite gifts. Right. Okay. So I have a review here. Awesome information. I'm a chiropractor who by profession looks for natural alternatives for my patients. With that being said, I'm not against medicine, but what I am against is the indiscriminate use of them. It's exactly what we say. That's funny. Thank you both for using alternative ways to help patients get healthier and to live the best life possible. From Dr. Jerry Kruckenberg. Thank you. Um, and and he, if they leave a review. Yes that will enter them into a raffle to yes. win one of your cookbooks. We just sent out four of them today. I love that. Yeah. And so go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com, leave a question, a comment, a review, and we'll enter you into a raffle. We are doing our part to keep you healthy. We want you to be healthy. So. And speaking of gifts, the Brain Warriors Way cookbook is an awesome gift because... What you're giving is the gift of brain health yeah. or the Brain Warrior's Way book or the Omni Diet that you wrote or Feel Better Fast, Make It Last or any of my books. Um, so what have been some of your favorite gifts? To receive or to give? Both. So when I'm giving a gift, I try to think about the person. Um, so it, it's really funny. In our family, no one really cares that much about gifts. Although now I have a teenager, so cash is always good. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yes, really- ca Cash is king. <laughs> yeah. Um, but really, no one cares that much about gifts. It's never been, it's been an interesting thing because it's not easy to just go out and buy a gift for somebody. It actually makes it challenging. Um, but, but for me, I don't really like gifts. It's not that I don't like them. I don't care that much about them. Um, so for me, it's time. What I want is time. So I like going on trips or weekend trips or vacations with family. That's really what I love. Um, I love even sitting and watching movies or whatever, but that's what I like to do, um, with, the, with the family. You, it's personal touch, it's time, it's attention. It's very, you're very much a, you know, people person as well. So you're not really into, I, trying to buy you a gift is next to impossible. No. It's next to. And I actually tell people what I like. Like my kids go, what do you want? What do you want? Yeah, I want the same thing all the time, which is I want pictures right. of my children and my grandchildren. But you can only give you so many pictures Why? before it starts to feel just weird, okay? Because because every year we give you pictures. I don't want pictures of myself. I know. I want pictures with the babies but it's and ridiculous. with the grandbabies. I mean, we feel repetitive, so. Right, so when you think of the person 
you know, you think they have everything. What they want is connection. Yeah. And so, you know, might be tickets to a basketball game. Right. Or a play. Or, I mean, it's very important. That's why I love the five love languages. I love that book, yeah. So one of the things that I, so here's a really good one. If you don't have a lot of money, okay, so understanding that some people aren't gift people is a good thing to know. Um, what I like to do is, it, for us, it's actually a big deal because we have a big family. I actually think of like putting the time in to get the house ready for the holidays. That's really an act of love. It's really an act, it's, it's an act of service and an act of love to your family. Cooking a big meal for the holidays, that's an act of service and an act of love. But making it to where our home is comfortable for everyone to come over, that doesn't require buying everyone a bunch of stuff. But it really is that thing, we, like we want our family to feel welcome and, and come over. And there are some people where cash is, as much as it seems like it's not a good gift, it is a good gift. You know, I mean, even for teenagers, just a little bit of cash is, it goes a long way. But really mostly for us, it's, it's, it's cooking the right foods. It's, it's making the home comfortable. It's spending time with our family. Those are really the big things. And then sometimes we'll plan vacations and do things like that. Well, and some of the things we have at Brain MD that I think are really great gifts are our three music albums. Mm -hmm. So the Brain Warriors Way music album, it's wonderful. Or music for Bright Minds, 45 weeks on Billboard's New Age chart. I like chart. Bright Minds the best. I was uh, their number six New Age artist of the year for last year. Why are you looking like at that? Because you're not a musician. <laughs> it's just not fair. Life is just not fair sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Feel Better Fast, Make It Last, 23 weeks, um, which I love. We're beginning to think of a <clears throat> new one called Your Brain is Listening. Um, so music is a great gift. Books are a great gift. So if you know a genre, like my dad really um, sort of lived through World War II. He was young, so he didn't have to go fight, but um, he likes books about World right. War II. I think books are great gifts. So books, clothes, depending on where you live. Uh, Healthy products. Be. Oh, that's great a great gifts. gift. Because a lot of people don't want to start over and spend the money to start over. So it's getting them started on healthy products is a great gift. Yeah, you actually did that recently yeah. for a young person in our life. Yeah. And he liked that. Yeah. And so you're investing in their health rather than investing in their illness. Mm -hmm. And so, so the music would make a great stocking stuffer. Another great stocking stuffer, now it's back in stock, is Brain and Love Bars. Mm -hmm. It's I love our those. brain healthy chocolate bars. And that's how I um, make um, nutty butter cups. And brain healthy protein. So I was just reading an article this morning on pea protein is actually one of the most complete plant proteins of all the proteins, and that's in... The brain MD yeah, I think we use protein pea powder. and chia is what we use. There. So protein powder would make a great gift. And the reason I like it is when the person you give it to, you know, that's going to last them a month or maybe longer. And they're thinking about you that whole time. So if they're sort of irritated with well, you, now they're if, less irritated with especially you. Especially if they have a New Year's resolution to get healthy. It gets them started. Brain Boost on the go would make a great stocking stuffer. Um, there's so many different brain healthy gifts that people could think about. Now, as I think about my all-time favorite gift in my whole life, it's you. Um, if Because you're like my dream girl. Um, so just waking up with you every morning is a gift for me. Um, sometimes when you're irritated with me, the gift sort of is a little prickly. But, uh, <laughs> but no so, question, if so I have rare. to like go, what is the number one gift in my life? It's clearly it's you, right? So it's what can you do to enhance your relationships? Right. Right. From a, from a physical thing, one of my patients actually went to a fair and had a sculptor make a spec camera oh, how funny. with a penguin. Oh, I know. I, that's such a cute gift. In the spec camera and getting scanned that. with a penguin in a white coat standing next 
reading the scan. I know. So they actually thought about what's important to me. And you had another patient who's <coughs> pretty well known write you a song about the brain. It was so great. I did. That was really, because it took time. Yeah. It took thoughtfulness. Now I had a patient who had OCD get me like 40 penguin things. <laughs> <laughs> I had this huge book, a uh, uh, huge box, and there were penguin ties and pens and oh, statues so and funny. snow globes and musical things. Oh, so funny. So great. So um, You have to I'm love like, all the, all the need, different things we see. I need it's so great. <laughs> <coughs> I needed to <coughs> raise her medication. It makes life interesting. But it was, it was fun. So what... Can you give that really requires a little bit of thought and, and maybe that serves their health rather than hurts their health? Right. And maybe it's something that requires a little bit of your time, but not your money if you don't have a lot of money. Can you make them, you know, can you take something healthy to eat to family function? Can you do something that just, you know, that's just thoughtful? A poem. Yeah. So somebody that you help a lot. Um, she wrote you a poem. Yeah, my daughter does really that. Beautiful. I mean, what is my daughter going to buy me? She doesn't need, there's nothing I, first of all, I don't really care that much about gifts, but she tends to write me things and it's really special for me. Yeah. Cause she's a good songwriter. So what's the one thing you've learned from this podcast? Share it. Give us the gift of sharing, uh, it on your social media sites, hashtag brain warriors way podcast, um, or write us a question, comment, or review and post it on Brain Warriors Way podcast.com. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking about the holidays, gifts and stress and all the things that go along with it. Um, in this episode, I actually want to talk about stressors. And what I'd love to know from you is what are your biggest stressors during the holiday? Maybe you can tell us what you do if you're really good at managing it. And if you're not, what are your biggest stressors and you know what is it you want to know about how to manage that? You can leave that on brainwarriorswaypodcast.com. You can also leave us a review at Apple Podcast or on brainwarriorswaypodcast.com. And if you do, it enters you in a raffle to win my cookbook, which we just sent a bunch out, um, which is a great gift for the holidays. And yeah, so let's talk about stress. Well, I have a review from um, a mom in Colorado. Thank you for doing the work you do. I'm a single mom who grew up in chaos, has the genetics for brain disaster, and was outrageously over-medicated. My brain was a disaster, as was my life. It's taken years of work and the guidance of your books to get to where I am now. Off meds, just landed a job I love, and launching a business. However, I have found myself a hundred percent single parent, and that has brought a new host of challenges. Mm -hmm. I love what Tana brings to the podcast mm -hmm. as a woman and mother. Hearing tips uh, from your kiddos has been so insightful as I guide my relationship and home structure with my own daughter. Thank you and love to your whole family. Mm. I was so on Apple sweet. reviews. That thank you. Well, and think of it from a single mom. You were a single mom when I found you. Mm -hmm. When you found me, I rescued like I was an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Not rescued you. When yeah, that's you, the wrong word. When you rescued me from, we rescued each other. Yes, from the craziness in my life. Yeah, yes. no, we rescued you. But you were a single mom, and it was hard. It was very hard, right? I mean, you were working and because these of my, twelve hour and shifts, because of and, my chaos. Um, to, to that fact, I wouldn't have a babysitter. So I refused to have babysitters because I had been so traumatized by babysitters in my past. So what I did was I was mom when she was there, when she went to visit her dad, I would work and I would work double shifts as a nurse. So I'd work nights, I'd work weekends, and then I would make up as much time as I could so that I could be home and be mom. And I was just exhausted. 
So, well, I wonder how many moms actually have adrenal fatigue. That, well, and I worked in a trauma unit, so <laughs> you can bet I had adrenal fatigue. You can bet that yeah. you did. And and it, it takes a tool, toll. And so if you're a single mom, being a brain warrior is even more important. Yeah. Um, oh, and I wasn't then. So my refrigerator, I was really good at making, I was dead set that I was going to make my daughter, I was going to give her what I didn't have. So I made her breakfast. I like made her whole foods. I didn't really understand what we understand now about the gluten-free stuff and all that. But I was like really good at making her food. And then I would eat frosting, <laughs> go to work and have two pots of coffee and M&Ms. So I was really bad. It was really bad. It was when we got together. Um, I feel like I'm in an AA meeting and we're sharing our confessions. Oh, yeah. No, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But when we got together and I started taking classes again and I'm like, wow, it hit me like how much my lifestyle and nutrition and all that was playing a part in, in my past illness over my life. And I didn't want to repeat that cycle. Yeah, didn't you say my growing up your best friends were the, the captain, captain, the tiger, and yeah, the leprechaun. The leprechaun. Yeah. Lucky Charms yeah. and um, Captain Crunch and yeah. um, Frosted Flakes. Mm -hmm. Wow. They started coming to dinner too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you have to be careful. They'll just, you know, wiggle their way yeah. into your they life. They look so harmless. And the problem is exposure equals preference. What you do is what you're going to want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not even want to do, but what you do is what you do again. And then what you do again, what you do again, it becomes an uh, unconscious habit. And what I love is this sort of leads into what we're talking about today with stress over the, hol over the holidays. People do not want to accept it. And I'm sorry, folks, you can want to accept it or not, because I go through this with, with our 16-year-old. Now, now that she's 16, the teenage gene is finally kicking in a little bit. And that pushing back, which I never thought would well, be, she was just so easy. And she's still easy. But, but that little bit of pushing you back. never thought she would push back. Well, she just, she well, I mean, she's always been strong-willed when she was five. <coughs> it was terrible. But she's been such an easy teenager. And all of a sudden now she's pushing back a little more and um, she's got her own opinions and her own, you know, she just, she's just not quite as easy. And she, you know, she wasn't, she, when she wasn't feeling quite right and she was getting a rash and she wasn't feeling like her normal self. And, and I'm like, have you tried cutting gluten out of your diet? Cause she does not want to acknowledge that she's sensitive like I am. And she's like, it's not that and rolls her eyes and gets all mad. And, and then finally she, it has to be her idea. She comes to me and she goes, so I'm going to cut gluten out of my diet and just see what happens. And she was like three days later, she's like, oh my God, I feel so much better. And she, it's her idea. But as we go into the holidays, our diets get worse and worse and worse and brain fog gets worse. And already people, even though we think of it as a happy time of year, it's not. For most people, if you actually look at the statistics, it's when depression goes up. It's when people are very, very stressed between the weather, the time change, the, you know, financial problems and having to shop, which that alone for me is just like, oh. But did you know that when men go to the mall, they bodies take on the physiology of a soldier in war? I knew I was a guy in disguise. So, but for me, it. that doesn't happen. I shouldn't have said that because that sounded really weird, but I knew that that was like, I knew there was something to Is that. Is there another discussion we need to have? Well, I'm just telling you, <laughs> when we get near a mall, I literally, my, I feel myself tensing. I feel like my blood pressure is going up. I get annoyed. Like, I'm, I'm like, I seriously, I'm almost angry when I get near a mall. And when you say, oh, it's your birthday, let me take you shopping. I'm like, I thought you loved me. Why would you do that to me? I get seriously annoyed. And then you found Amazon. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which talks. All right. So let's, let's, this is not about us. This is know, about our it listeners. To stress. So if you don't like the mall and you don't, and you have to do some shopping, online shopping. Yes. The best. But with what you can afford, which right. means take care of your frontal lobe so that you plan. And part of the one page miracle I do with all of my patients. Uh, so if you haven't, ever done a one page miracle on one piece of paper, just write down what you want in your relationships, in your um, money, in your work, mm -hmm. in your physical, emotional, and spiritual health. And with money, and you know, I think psychiatrists don't talk enough to their patients about money and managing their money because it's clearly one of the biggest stress is 
if I spend this, does it fit the goals I have for my life? Right. And so we're often so wanting to please other people, but going in debt to do that increases your stress and then you're not as happy. You're not as fun. And you know, as somebody on the receiving end, it doesn't feel good to me when I know, when I know that someone had to put themselves in a position of being stressed to get that gift. It, that doesn't feel good. That feels awkward. So just FYI, the person receiving it, unless it's a little kid, um, they, they, they tend to not and see And one it the of the same things way. I've learned about little kids, you know, being a child psychiatrist, that Haven, my she likes the box, 16 <laughs> month old granddaughter, actually likes the box and better the bows than the, and the, yeah. Right. So it, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's the thought and the time that counts. And if you go, oh, well, you don't know my family, then it's, you know, are these really the right people to hang out with? Because you become like the people you spend time with. So, so, um, so, so the tips we so far have talked about food, really watch your, protect yourself. Um, Brain warriors protect themselves. Right. Because you're good. Food will, the food you eat will either make you feel better or more stressed going into the holidays. We talked about um, how to shop um, to protect yourself. Like I know I hate them, hate it. And I hate it worse during the holiday, hate them all. Um, So I shop on Amazon for the shopping I'm going to do. I try to think of things that are more gifts of service. So maybe that's something you can do. Um, Don't stress yourself financially in any more than you absolutely have to. Um, And you'll be surprised at how much you can do. Like reading books to kids is a really helpful thing. And one great gift that you could institute if you're not already doing this is something called special time, uh, which we've talked about a lot, but it's spend 20 minutes a day with your child Mm -hmm. doing something he or she wants to do. Games or books. I remember one, because I like watching basketball and you don't. And one Christmas you said, I'll watch 10 games with you because I just like it. You still collected all of them. I still, but, but I, I know that you owe them to me yeah, and I feel good That about makes it. you feel good, yeah. <laughs> no, it makes me feel good when you're with me doing yeah. something. That you love. That I'll I, go to uh, the games with you anytime. I like going to games. I just don't like it on TV. So, well, yeah. Now the Lakers are more fun. But be careful. Right. There is one word of caution with special time. When you institute it, it's really hard to uninstitute it. So- our 16 year old still every morning she gets up, mommy and she climbs in my lap. Can we go for a walk? Can we go for a drive? Can we, she's still like, it becomes this like ritual that you have. Yeah, to but who has the most influence <clears throat> over her? I'm and sort of kidding. Cause I love it. 16 year old. You want the parents to have. I'm going to influence. cry when it ends. I'm going to cry. And it'll be okay. Because no. you and I can have more special time. I know. See you. <laughs> what is the one thing you've learned today about how you can help manage stress uh, during the holidays? Uh, um, post it on any of your social media sites and hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. Uh, also, leave us a comment, question, or review on how you manage the stress or any really cool Brain Warrior gifts that you've given to people you care about. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, This podcast, we're going to do brain in the news. There's so much to talk about. Um, but we hope we're going to get to four studies. Uh, Before we do that, let me read another review. Um, I found Dr. Amon's video, The Most Important Lesson from 83,000 Scans. In my psych class, I'm doing a self-study on how my diet affects my anxiety and trying to keep up with the course plus full-time work. 
I've lost 11 pounds in five days just ditching my daily iced coffees. Thank you. The combination of Dr. Amen's obesity scan and the podcast with Dr. Lustig's leptin fructose Mm -hmm. description was the aha moment for me. You both need Superman capes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The fat is scared off me and my brain finally doesn't hurt straining to understand my schoolwork. That's from a really Gigi. Thank you Gigi. That's a really important point that as you get healthy, it's not it's just as you get healthy and you clean up your diet, your brain fog goes away. We hear that all the time. People can think better. Yeah, it's really interesting. Awesome. What have you, you got? You have uh I do. An article? New lawsuit alleges that Juul sold 1 million contaminated pods. The company's CEO allegedly said that half of its customers would be too drunk and vaping to notice. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, she got no. fired, though, right? Um, the e-cigarette company, Juul, allegedly sold a million contaminated vape liquid pods earlier this year without telling customers or issuing a recall, according to a lawsuit filed Tuesday by a, t- by a former company executive. That's insane. The reason this bothers me is because... Kids are the number one market for this. And when my daughter went to, she goes, she was used to attend a high school, a local high school here with al- almost 3,000 kids or over 3,000 kids. And they had to search the lockers because it was such an epidemic. And all the toilets got stopped up that day. All of them because they Why? flushed their jewels down the oh, toilets. No. Yes. Oh, no. So the lawsuit. The incidence of nicotine use in children went up 36% last year. Year. Because they made them desirable. Right. And whenever you do bubblegum flavor, right. you know they're targeting children. Right. So the lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of the Northern District of California alleges the company has jeopardized and continues to jeopardize public health and safety and the lives of millions of consumers, children, many of them children and teens. Yes, that's what they said. Wow. Yep. So. Um, vaping is not in your best interest and it's not in the best interest of children. Um, for yeah. certain. No, he was terminated um, because he failed to demonstrate the leadership qualities needed in his role. On a more positive note, uh, Crocus sativus, saffron. Um, there's a brand new the study. Crocus sativus, hmm. saffron, the world's most expensive spice, in a group of older people. Um, So 50 older outpatients with major depressive disorder were randomly assigned to either saffron, 60 milligrams a day, or to (coughs) sirtuli, Zoloft, 100 milligrams a day, good dose, for six consecutive weeks. Um, They were equally effective. Wow. And this is like the 17th study. Right. On so this depression is not like a, that shows that well saffron known. is helpful, which is why we put it in mm-hmm. serotonin mood support. And I love it in my tea. And, um, you know, when I first started using saffron in some of the Brain MD products, we live in a neighborhood where there are a number of Persian families. And yeah. I was talking about it at one of the parties we were at. And the person I was talking to said, oh, in Iran... Saffron, the folklore is if you're too happy, yeah. it's because you had saffron. Yeah, you, and you isn't it interesting to see the science? Yeah. And we were just talking about how there's actually 73% of people who use SSRIs like Zoloft or Prozac or Lexapro, um, Celexa, um, have sexual dysfunction. But saffron, which has also been found to be effective, is prosexual, so your function is better rather than it hurts your sexual right. function. And I don't like that, 73%, because if you're not being intimate with your partner, it can hurt your right. relationship. Well, and it makes you not feel as good about yourself. There's something about feeling desired and desirable in your relationship that just makes you feel better. Yeah, interesting. Awesome. Okay. New study finds that every four extra years of education reduces the risk of binge drinking by 50%. Stay in school. Isn't that interesting? I mean, we're always joking. Stay in school, make good decisions. 
but it's so true. Not finishing school could double your risk of becoming a binge drinker. Researchers found that people who did an extra four years of school were 50% less likely to become alcoholics. That's just strange. Men and women who completed school were, all, were also more likely to drink wine, while those who didn't were more likely to drink distilled spirits, beer, and cider. The team, uh, the team from the National Institute of Health said the findings suggest that promoting education may be a useful tool in public health campaigns that warn against alcohol abuse and dependence. You have to wonder if it's because they feel more competent or if it's because they've been in the habit of working so hard. I mean, I'm just wondering... Um, I haven't read further into this. I just read the headlines. What the <coughs> what the reason is? What would you say? Well, I mean, in order to get through school, you it's better to have an unpolluted brain because you tend to finish your classes. Right. You tend to show up. You tend to do the right things. When I was in the army, so when I was eighteen, um, I went into the army and I became an infantry medic. And I was stationed in Europe with, um, in my room, in the barracks, there were six people, which I didn't really like very much. Yeah. Five of them were smoking pot. And um, I went to school at night, which helped decrease the contact high <laughs> for me. Right. And they didn't. They just basically, here we are stationed in West Germany. Um, it's so beautiful. I traveled all the time, went to school. They stayed in the room and got high. Which leads me to the next Brain in the News study on cannabinoids in the treatment of mental disorders. So this is in Lancet Psychiatry. So one of the best journals in the world. They did a systematic review of all of the studies published between January 1st, 1980 and April 30th, 2018, looking to see well, you know, the lore is if you smoke pot, that helps anxiety, that helps depression, that helps you do better in school. Um, in fact, the conclusion was there is scarce evidence to suggest that cannabinoids improve depressive disorders, anxiety, ADHD, Tourette, PTSD, or psychosis. Though the evidence that's there is very low quality evidence. And in fact, there's evidence that marijuana increases yes. anxiety, yes. increases paranoia, and increases ADHD. So um, we're fighting, and brain warriors do this, we fight against the societal idea that marijuana is innocuous, that CBD is completely innocuous, and quite frankly, after seeing literally thousands of scans of people who are smoking pot, their brains are not healthy. And I published a study on 62,000 scans, the world's largest imaging study, showing marijuana actually prematurely ages the brain. So a couple of, um, actually several teenagers now, a couple we've taken care of and helped in different situations. And um, they, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to, because it's such a, it's just such a common thing for kids to do in their teenage years. And we'll tell them, you know, because they're, they're depressed, anxious, having problems in school. And they don't want to hear that that's the reason. Just like they don't want to hear that bad food is bad for them. It's like, it's just such a common thing. And literally sometimes within, it's not while they're smoking it. It's, it's almost like the hangover effect. And all of a sudden they'll notice this like, just like sharp decline in mood. And they'll be anxious, they'll be depressed, and it's almost instantaneous, like that they'll start to notice it, but they don't want to admit it. But when you can finally help them make that connection that that's what's really triggering it, you know, it's, it's for some people, it's obviously your genetics probably play a role. For some people, it's very significant. And what are the studies that show that it increases the risk of psychosis by 400? 450%. Yeah, in some people. All right. So what did you learn during this Brain in the News podcast? Uh, write it, uh, post it on any of your social media sites. We'd be grateful. Hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. Leave us a question, comment, or a review on Brain Warriors Way podcast.com and we'll enter you into a raffle to win one of Tana's cookbooks. Stay with us. We're going to answer your questions next. Welcome back. Uh, this is one of our favorite segments where we answer your questions and we have some great questions. But first, do you have a review? I do, yes. 
<clears throat> I cannot thank you enough for your podcast. In January, my husband was airlifted to Loma Linda. Ooh, that was my unit. 8100. Was airlifted to Loma Linda with a cavernoma located at the top of his brain stem. The surgery was 15 hours. It was a pituitary tumor on the brain stem, and Scott had a stroke in the basal ganglia. Ouch. I was told my husband might never wake up. At day seven, they encouraged me to turn off the vent. Since that time, he has slowly improved. We were told that my husband would be in a head support wheelchair the rest of his life. A friend shared your podcast with me, and I started listening in May. When I bought your book, I realized I could get liquid flaxseed oil and started him on a tablespoon. It didn't happen right away, but we could see changes. I have kept him off sugar as much as I can, and I'm very careful with his diet. The exercise, no sugar, omegas, and ants have helped so much. I have a friend that is now listening to you too. At first, my family wasn't supportive, but watching your PBS and your YouTube has helped them understand that sugar is the enemy. Scott can now walk without a walker, holy cow, and is slowly regaining his memory, all because of you and Tana. I know this, I know this is a marathon, not a sprint. Keep up the good work, Daniel and Tana. You have given me a roadmap to follow, and I so appreciate and love you. From Marie. Wow. That was my unit. That's a hard unit. I know. I'm just like sitting here crying like a baby. That's why we do what we do. I mean, you know, for the rest of their lives, they're going to be brain warriors. They have to be brain warriors. And so many of you listening, if you have a neurological issue, that's a brain issue, um, you need to be a warrior, whether it's Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's or seizure disorder, migraine headaches. It's not just anxiety, depression, ADHD, and addictions. It's all of these things that when you do the habits we talk about, it literally can save extend mm -hmm. and optimize your life. Uh, I'm just so grateful. Um, I'm going to post that on mm -hmm. my wall. That just makes me so happy. All right. So we have questions. Uh, I'll take the first one. Do you have any research on brain waves, brain activity, um, and brain development while in a state of fear? I do. And, uh, when you think negatively, yeah. when you think about what you're afraid of, it actually drops function in your frontal lobes. Oh, that's it drops interesting. Function in your temporal lobes and it drops function in your cerebellum. So you're not coordinated, you Ooh. make bad decisions and you're more irritable. Oh, for so, sure more irritable, <laughs> for and sure. Learning how to modulate that is important. Now, let's just get it out of the way first. Some fear is good for you. You need some fear. But are they, so my question is, would they be talking about chronic fear or that like, like, like when something scares you, like threatens you, like that moment, like that acute type of fear? I don't know. So that's she the question say. because that would be, my question is like, like, is it that, that constantly I'm afraid of things in life or is it the like something, you know, like when we were scared by the pit bulls type of thing? Well, you told me to turn around and I'm like, no, let's walk to the end. And I didn't see the pit bulls and they came and attacked us. So your intuition and your mother has this like crazy. Well, but see, I actually see it as because when you grow up in chronic like chaos and trauma, you become, you're, you have heightened awareness of your surroundings. So you can call it whatever you want, intuition, whatever. I actually just call it heightened awareness. You don't even can't always pinpoint what it is that's bothering you at the moment, but you learn to listen to it. Interesting. Here, why don't you read this one? My husband and I are seeking to adopt an infant domestically and are presently receiving emails daily about prospective birth mother adoption situations. In each case, we receive information about the birth parents, biosocial medical history. Of course, we see a variety of things like bipolar, schizophrenia, substance abuse, homelessness, criminal activity, oof, lack of parental care, etc. listed with each case. My husband and I are experiencing difficulty identifying what we are willing to say yes and no to. What advice do you have for us as we decide... What issues we are willing and not willing to take on? What advice do you have for adopting parents in general? Thank you. I love your podcast so much that I have had my brain scanned at your clinics. Life-changing and worth every penny. God bless you both and your work from Ashley. Wow. That's a hard one. 
But it's important. I mean, I've seen thousands of adopted kids over the years. I adopted my oldest. And uh, family history matters. But if you read my new book, The End of Mental Illness, coming out in March, uh, and I hope all of you pre-order it. I'd just be so grateful. Um, I dedicated the book to our nieces, Amelie right. and Alizé. I was just about to say. Who um, genetically, They're schizophrenia, loaded. bipolar disorder, suicide, suicide, drugs. Suicide, Depression, anxiety, PTSD, borderline personalities. I mean, they had like Drugs and the alcohol. whole thing. And they were raised in chaos. So genes only load the gun. It's what happens to you that pulls the trigger. Yet, despite that, they're amazing. We love them dearly. But they're amazing. In a college prep school right. with straight A's. And so, you know, for adoptive parents, pay attention to the family history because it increases their risk, which means if that's the child you choose, you need to increase the brain warrior mindset to help mitigate that risk. Yeah, this is really important because genetics play are obviously a huge part of this. When I think of, you know, our nieces and other people, a lot of other kids we know. Um, now, we took in another kid who was high risk, and, and the results weren't quite as good. I have no doubt in my mind, if we, had we been able to keep her longer, we would have had a different outcome because because the environment really matters, but so does resilience, okay? I think that there's something to do with resilience, and our nieces are resilient. And so there's something about that that, that makes a difference. Um, I've got certain family members who have those same genes, and they're not as resilient. So that makes a difference. And the, the other young girl we helped that we moved into our house was beginning to do really well. And it was a battle. It was just a constant battle. But as soon as she moved out and was not in that environment any longer, she immediately sort of went downhill. So it's, that's challenging. That's a really hard one. But, but it's not a death sentence. So I would always balance it. Right. You know, the better care that the mother took care of herself mm -hmm. during the pregnancy the higher the chance of success. Mm -hmm. um, but all of these children need love and families. And, and so you just have to see what, what you feel comfortable with. Right. Let's see what we have next. I just watched a documentary on Netflix called The Game Changer, which said that all animal products, including eggs, fish, and chicken, cause inflammation in the body. Is that true? Because it doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> it, okay, so it always depends on the source you're listening to. It just does. Um, it's, you can find, they will find some evidence and a way to spin things, um, depending on what source you're listening to. If you go to, when I go to my courses, they have both vegan and caveman, you know, doctors lecturing on the benefits of both sides. And depending on which lecture you listen to, you'll be convinced of their position. Now, if you are looking at these foods and you're talking about fast food and you're talking about genetically modified, you're talking about not pasture raised, raised pesticides, of course. But I eat eggs, fish, and chicken a lot. Right. And my inflammatory markers are very low. Likewise, when because I was I vegan- Because I also eat a lot of plants. Likewise, when I was vegan, my numbers were never worse. Now, I don't think it's the same for everybody. I just don't believe one diet fits every person. Um, so we actually believed you should get your numbers checked. Um, but, you know, it, you can find evidence to this on both sides of the fence. So well, our friend- and, But everybody agrees to get rid of sugar and foods that turn to sugar- processed foods, uh, adulterated yes. foods, foods. Um, I mean, you know, we can come to an agreement on the foods to lose. And then it really, the more plants, the better. Right. We've, we think some protein, um, high animal quality protein, protein, high quality protein. But, but even the cavemen tend to think that a highly plant-based diet with a little bit of high quality protein is good. They just don't believe in getting rid of all of the protein because actually you can also find a number of studies showing that their incidence of depression and anxiety has gone up as people have stopped eating meat. So it depends on who you're looking at. And I just, my, here's my, our response to that, get your numbers checked. If you're going to be vegan, make sure you're supplementing. So interesting. Um, what did you learn today? 
uh, post it on any of your social media sites and hashtag Brain Warriors Way Podcast. Leave us a comment, question, or review on brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and we'll enter you into a raffle to get one of Tana's cookbooks. We'll enter you into a raffle to get Tana's cookbook, The Brain Warriors Way Cookbook, which I ate the chili out of last night. You can also tag us on Instagram and I um, I have a big following that I answer questions for there as well and do little videos to answer. So yeah, make sure you're reaching out. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics, or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.